Okay, not having it in the Game Caviar Studios. I'm rocking out on Armor Core 5 again. This game is amazing. This mission right here is uh, jam-packed. It's action-packed. I don't know whether you can hear the music that they have playing in the background, but that all goes within making this whole uh, mission heart-pounding. The ambiance of the mission itself is amazing. And I like it. But anyway, that's not why I'm here. It's not why I'm here. Okay? Everybody just listen up for a second. Listen up. I was on uh, IGN today. And they did a review for Prototype 2. They gave it a 7.0. And it got me thinking. Um, I read the whole review. And it said that the game was very good but forgettable. Kind of a contradiction of terms. It's not like I don't I, I've never experienced something in my life that was very good but forgettable. I don't understand that. It's like if something if you enjoy something and it's uh quote very good then how can you forget it unless you get amnesia? Maybe that's what they were trying to get at. Like, you'll forget this if you get amnesia. I doubt it. But the thing, the problem that I have with IGN, and uh, I'm not the only person that has this issue, is that these guys, they put out reviews on video games, and they are some of the worst reviews ever published by a video game uh, website. And it's a shame because they don't really need to do reviews on anything. They could just provide rumors and news and uh, mold their website around that, which I wish they would do because they, they really suck at making reviews on video games. You can't really categorize a video game as being really good and, you know, uh, it's action-packed, but it's forgettable. They said that the side missions were uh, repetitive and blah, blah, blah. Uh, there were a lot of side missions and the game they said it took like 14 hours for the game for you to beat the game if you complete all the side missions uh, 14 hours is a long time that's really good but they they keep they, they I mean they gave it a 7.0 for crying out loud but it takes 14 hours it has a ton of side missions although they may be a bit repetitive they're side missions it's not like every mission is the same where you go and they're like okay um morph into this guy and go kill this guy next mission morph into this guy and go kill this guy next mission kill this guy but before you kill him morph into this guy just to make sure he doesn't recognize you i can understand if side missions are repetitive there are a bunch of other games that have side missions that are repetitive as well infamous for one of them had side missions that were seriously repetitive and it killed my interest in that game the first one because the side missions were so annoying and i believe didn't you have to no did you have to do side missions to nah it was something something about the side missions annoyed me but anyway fact of the matter is the game supposedly had a uh good storyline and they were saying that the graphics were kind of iffy the graphics in the first prototype were kind of iffy but the game itself wasn't it, it wasn't like the uh, the the tagline for that game wasn't realistic graphics prototype. It was look, we have this game that has a really good storyline and is action packed. This is our product, and that's what Prototype Two is. So it's not like a a, a kill zone which has a good storyline but also has very good graphics, or like an Uncharted or like a very good graphical Xbox 360 game, which I cannot think of right now, but I'm sure one exists, maybe. It's, it's more of a, this is our, the game is tailored more on the storyline and less on the graphics. Now I'm not saying the graphics look like PlayStation 2 graphics. By all means, they are up to current gen standards from what I've seen. But the thing that I have against IGN is that sometimes these these reviewers they come in with these preconceived notions about video games and that affects the uh the 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 overall score and then you have the idiots who read the reviews and actually believe it and i've read some of the comments and people are like oh, i'm glad i read this i canceled my pre-order like if you if you really 
take what you find on IGN to heart as far as reviews, you're an idiot. Because if they persuade you to change your pre-order or cancel a pre-order for a game just off what one person said in a review that's crappy, then you're stupid. I mean, I'm, you are. If you're if you don't have enough free will to play a game for yourself, and even if you pre-ordered it to play it for yourself and see exactly what the issue or whether it's a game that you will like or not, then you know that's stupid. That's dumb. Why would you let somebody else make a a stupid review and let that control your actions? You know, if they made a review that told you to go play in traffic, are you gonna do that too? I, I mean, people, we need to start. Well, not we, because I don't do this, but and that's a lot of other people that don't do it. But I, stop letting these people influence you like that. And I'm sure it's a lot of shady business going on in these big reviews that come out because there's no way in the world. I'm, I'm waiting for the game to come out tomorrow and I'll play it. And if it's honestly a 7.0 game, which I doubt that it is, then okay. But just going off that review and, and seeing what was said about it, it's not going to be a 7.0 game. It's going to be higher than that. I think these these reviewers come with preconceived notions and maybe they get influenced by the publishers or whatnot and they just go and they put out these garbage reviews and people just eat it up and it's crazy that's the biggest thing I have against IGN so if anybody from IGN sees this after you click dislike on the video stop doing video game reviews because they all suck anyway this video is over I failed that mission with flying colors. I'm not having it in the Game Caviar studio and I'm out.